And amen. I'm going to give you a few moments to get that together. And somebody would get me another little bit of water. Amen. We don't want this sermon to be dry this morning. Amen. 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 Praise his holy name. 2 Kings chapter 4, verses 1 through 6. If you are there, say amen. 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 The word of the Lord says, Now there cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophet unto Elisha, saying, Thy servant, my husband, is dead. And thou knowest that thy servant did fear the Lord. And the creditor is come to take unto him my two sons to be bondmen. And Elijah said unto her, What shall I do for thee? Tell me what hast thou in the house. And she said, Thy handmaid hath not anything in the house save a pot of oil. Then he said, Go and borrow the vessels from abroad and of all of thy neighbors, even empty vessels, watch this, borrow not a few. Mm -hmm. And when thou art come in, thou shalt shut the door upon thee and upon thy sons, and shalt pour out into all these vessels, and thou shalt set aside that which is full. Mm -hmm. So when she went from him and shut the door upon her and upon her sons who brought the vessels to her and she poured out. Mm -hmm. And verse 6 says, And it came to pass that when the vessels were full that she said unto her son, Bring me yet a vessel. And he said to her, There is not a vessel more and the oil stayed. Now let's read verse 7 together. Then she came and told the man of God, and he said, Go, sell the oil, and pay thy debt, and live thou and thy children of the rest. Amen. 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 Thank you so very much. This morning, Jerusalem, uh, hallelujah, we're going to give our May, of course, an opportunity to get in place. And we have been uh, speaking to you from a series of uh, sermons. Uh, and uh, I'd like to tag this series the Do It Yourself series. Amen? Yes. The Do It Yourself series. Amen. We started off and uh, we realized uh, that David said you can encourage yourself. Oh, somebody say encourage yourself. Encourage. Amen. And in this life sometimes you just have to encourage yourself. Amen. Uh, you ought to look to somebody on your left or your right and tell them encourage yourself. Encourage. Yes. Yes. And then, and then on last Sunday uh, we uh, also were told by the Lord to tell God's people to build up yourself. Amen. And, and the, the writer of Jude told us we ought to build ourselves up in our most holy faith. And one, one, one uh, person might say, well, preacher, how do you build yourself up? Well, you build yourself up by staying prayed up. Amen. Amen. Tell somebody, if you stay prayed up, you'll stay built up. Amen. Hallelujah. And for uh, this morning's uh, topic, uh, I want to tag this, this text this morning, Help Yourself. Help Yourself. Amen. We just, just, uh, you helping me preach already. We just went through Thanksgiving. And, and I believe, and I believe I've got some witnesses in the house, so y'all got to come on this morning and act like you know what I'm talking about. The two words that we all like to hear at Thanksgiving is, help yourself. 
Uh, we know that when the, uh, the hostess says, help yourself, that means that you can get all that you want. There is no limit on the number of portions that you can receive. Oh, y'all ought to be more happy than that. Amen. Because uh, when Sister White uh, uh, lays out many times, she would tell me, now uh, you can eat it all up if you want to. Uh-huh. And you won't have nothing tomorrow. But on, th oh, y'all ain't going to help me this morning. Uh, but on Thanksgiving, she told me, help yourself. And that meant I could eat all that I wanted. And maybe that doesn't mean a lot to some of you all because, so you know, you're not on a, a ration like some of us men are. Amen. Y'all can just eat all you want to, but see, they don't let us go and just eat all that we want to. Hey, hallelujah, they don't know what I'm talking about, Lord. We'll eat up the whole kitchen if you let us a loose in there. Amen. Uh-huh, but sometimes it's just good to hear those two words, help yourself. Uh, and look, help is something that uh, we have to be uh, thankful for because uh, uh, oftentimes in this life, you will feel helpless. Oh, I, I, I believe that uh, if we uh, look at, uh, back over our lives, we can see some uh, times when we felt helpless. Uh, but the good news I want to tell you this morning in Jerusalem is when you feel helpless, you can always turn to God because we have a God who can help us. Uh, the Bible says in the psalm that he's a very present help in the time of a storm. And I'm glad this morning that I serve a God who's able to help me. Uh, and he's able to send his help and it's always right on time. And, and that's uh, good because uh, uh, the, 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 the Hebrew writer said, let us therefore come boldly before the throne of grace. Uh, why do we come boldly, preacher? That we may obtain mercy and grace to help in a time of need. And, and, and I'm glad that we got grace and mercy that will show up when I need some help. Because it, I, I don't know about you, but uh, it's, 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 it's difficult when you have in need of help and you can't find nobody to help you. Uh, but the God that we serve will send you the help and he'll send you the help that you need. Uh, what are you talking about, preacher? Well, see, uh, Moses needed some help uh, because Moses had some difficulty articulating his word. But God said, I'm going to send you some help. So he sent Aaron to help Moses. Well, I believe I'll go on a little further. If you read your Bible, I want you to know uh, uh, that Daniel needed some help because they threw Daniel in the lion den. And now, if you see me wrestling with a lion, you better send me some help. Uh, and the Lord sent some help down in that lion den because the Bible said that an angel came down in that lion den and stood between Daniel and those lions. And, and I believe I can hear the songs of old saying, all night, all day, angels watching over me. And that angel locked that lion's jaws. Well, I tell you, uh, not only will angels help you, but uh, uh, Paul needed some help too. Because Paul needed some help singing and praying his way out of that Philippian jail. See, sometimes you can get in some trouble and you need somebody to help you get out of, oh, I ain't getting no help over here on this side. Maybe y'all ain't never been in no trouble, but the folk over here, they've been in some trouble. And they know that when you're in trouble, you're going to need somebody to help you get out of trouble. And so Paul and Silas was in trouble. They didn't know what to do. So they just started singing and praying and, and praising God. And, and when you're in need of a, a blessing, all you got to do is remember when praises go up, blessings come down. Uh, so uh, as, I, as, I enter you, as we uh, go to the scene of this text this morning, I tell you, there is a woman here in Jerusalem, and she needed some help. Oh, yes, she did. And, uh, and I want to uh, tell you that uh, she was uh, a, 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 a godly woman. How do you know that, preacher? Because it says right there, now there cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets. 
That means uh, not only was she a godly woman, but she also had a godly husband. Oh, I wish I could stop and preach right there because, you know, it's one thing to be godly yourself, but the Bible tells us not to be unequally yoked with unbelievers. But this woman, she had her, uh, what they call a good man, uh, because he believed in the Lord. And, and, and because of this uh, good man she had, this woman uh, found herself uh, even in a desperate situation. See, because uh, even though you serve the Lord, that does not exempt you from trouble in your life. Oh, I wish I had a prayer in church this morning. Uh, uh, those of us who are willing to admit it know that even since I've been walking with the Lord, uh, there have been some trials and some tribulation. Even though I'm blood washed and blood bought and, and I'm washed in the blood of the Lamb, I've still had some struggles. And that's what this woman was having. What kind of struggle was she having? Preacher, I'm glad you asked. Uh, look at there. It says uh, that uh, when I checked it out, I found out that she needed some help because first, her husband had died. Uh, and, and not only uh, was, was she uh, a widow, but she had two sons to raise by herself. Now, my mama can tell you when you got two boys to raise, by yourself you got yourself a handful just to be able to feed them rascals oh y'all ain't gonna help me this morning is a handful uh, and, and 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 then not only did she have those two boys to raise her but the bible said that she had a bill that she could not pay now don't y'all all get up and shout at the same time but i know that everybody ought to be shouting right there because all of us have had some bills that we could not pay all of us i don't care how good a job you got now child of god you ain't always made the money you're making right now and you have had some days where you had to scrape the bottom of the barrel amen and try to pull it all together so that you could keep those lights on i wish i had somebody in here today now, there have been some time when you had to rob peter help me somebody to pay paul uh, so that you could keep the water on uh, help me somebody there are some times when uh, uh, y'all ain't gonna help me in you had to hide the car to keep the folk from coming by and picking up the car because the car note wasn't paid. Uh, oh, y'all ain't going to help me. I'm going to go on and talk about it. There was some times uh, when you had to eat soup and chili so that you could pay your house. No, help me today. Yeah, we all have had some bills that we cannot pay. And, and, and if you didn't fall into that category, I want you to know you got a sin bill that you cannot pay. My Bible tells me that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And, and, and it also said that the wages, uh, help me, the Bible, the wages, I, I'm talking about what you get when you sin. The wages of sin is death. And, and if you got to pay that bill, the only way you're going to be able to pay it is to lay down your life. But glory to God, we have a Savior. Where he said, no, I ain't going to let you pay that bill because I'm going to pay it for you. And he stepped in and he paid my debt for me. And that's why I'm so glad, happy this morning because Jesus stepped in and he paid my debt. Glory to his name. So she had some bills. She had some bills that she, had, she, she wasn't able to pay. And evidently, the bill collector wasn't like the one we have now because it sounded like they showed up at the house. Yeah, yeah. Amen. And, and, and uh, they said, uh, if you can't pay the bill, we're going to take your two sons. Now, I know some of us got some children. We say, y'all go right on home. Just go on and take them. Amen. Like, that's all right with me. Just go on, you know, and if you, 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 you can feed them. You can have them. Amen. Glory to his name. But this woman, she didn't want to lose her children. Hey, man, I wish I had some mothers out there today who would say, no, I don't want to lose my children. No, I don't know what's going on in your life, but I want to tell somebody today, you got to do whatever you can to make sure we don't lose our children in this generation. We cannot let debt continue to steal our children for us. 
Oh, uh, uh, y'all just going to have to excuse me this morning. Because see, what we're doing, we're turning our children over to the television because we so stressed out trying to stay on them jobs to pay all them bills and we don't have time to raise our children. They ain't going to help me, Lord. See, when your, when, when your cable bill, $200, you can't, work, you, you, you can't work one job. You got to have two or three jobs. Amen. Cost you to watch TV these days. Help me, somebody. You got to have internet in your house today. Amen. Oh, y'all ain't going to help me. You got to have a cell phone these days. You got mobiles. Oh, y'all, th th I know that this woman had her plate full, but she knew what to do when she was back in a corner. She knew what to do when her back was against the wall. This woman knew how to get a prayer through because she went and found her a, a prayer partner. She went and found the man of God. And then that's where we pick it up here. And, and uh, as I go through, the first thing I want to see this, tell you that this woman had humility. Everybody say humility. Uh, uh, see, she wasn't too proud to ask for some help. I don't know where we get this notion that we don't need to ask nobody for nothing. Because uh, uh, maybe we need to go back to the time where we had to borrow sugar from the person next door in order to fix that cake on things. Maybe we need to go back to the time where we had to borrow a cup of flour so that we could make them biscuits. Maybe we need to go back. But we done got to where we, we too proud to ask for help. But she, she was humble and I, I, I believe that the Bible said that God resists the proud. But he gives grace. He gives grace to the humble. Look there in verse uh, 1. She says that uh, she said to Elijah, thy servant, my husband, is dead. And thou knowest that thy servant did fear the Lord. And the creditors come to take my two sons. So not only do I see that she had humility, but I also see uh, that uh, there was some empathy. That was some empathy. Now, I didn't say sympathy. I said empathy. See, there is a distinct difference between sympathy and empathy. Y'all follow me, aren't you? See, sympathy says, I am sorry you're going through what you're going through. But empathy says, what can I do to help you while you're going through? Oh, ain't nobody shouting but me because I know that it takes some time. You're not looking for somebody to just tell you, child, I so feel sorry for you. But you're looking for somebody that can give you some help. You're looking for somebody who will have some uh, empathy. But, but, but you know what? I've noticed, uh, child of God, uh, that uh, sometimes in this life uh, we uh, should be uh, headlights but we end up being brake lights. But the Bible said, let your light so shine before God that he may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. So you got to let your headlight shine and not your brake light shine. See, many times as Christians, we too busy trying to tell folk what they ought to stop doing instead of showing them how to get to Jesus. And, and, and that's the difference between headlights and brake lights. And, and, and so uh, this is what the woman says here. She says uh, uh, to Elijah, she says, uh, I need some help. And Elijah said right there in verse 2, what shall I do for thee? That shows his empathy. He was concerned about what was going on in her life. And, and that's uh, good news today when you can find somebody that t will be willing to get involved with what is going on in your life. Now, I, I, I want to say something about this woman, and then I'm going to go on to, uh, they didn't say her name. 
And, and I wondered about that because I wondered if Elisha knew her, why didn't he mention her name? But uh, I, I, I felt like that it was because she didn't want nobody in her business. Oh, they didn't, they, it didn't hit y'all like it hit me. You know, sometimes uh, when you're not looking for sympathy, but you're looking for empathy, you don't want nobody in your business. Why? Because you're not looking for a handout, but you're looking for a hand up. And I want you to know that a hand up is showing up better than a hand out. Because, see, when I get a hand out, I don't care who knows because I'm just looking for a hand out. But when I'm looking for a hand up, I don't need nobody in my business. All I need you to do is if you can help me, child, come on and help me. Keep your mouth closed and, and help me to do what God has called me to do. Yeah, so uh, she was looking for a hand up and not a hand out. But uh, I see one more thing in this text. Uh, not only do I see uh, empathy, but... I see also, uh, look there in uh, the latter part of verse 2. She said, what shall I do for thee? And then Elijah said, tell me, what hast thou in the house? Now, now that troubled me, Jerusalem. It troubled me, and I was concerned because he first said, what can I do for you? Then he turned around and asked her, what do you have in the house? Because, see, if you're going to help me, then I, I want to know what you're going to do. Oh, I need some help in here this morning. But he turned right around and asked her, what does she have in the house? It, it sounded like to me that it was a setup because he said he was going to help her, but then he asked her, what does she have in the house? But, but, but can I tell you something, Jerusalem, uh, that God wants you to make an investment in your miracle. Yeah. The Bible said that faith without works is dead. Yeah. And in other words, what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to be willing to get involved in your own miracle. Uh, see, uh, we can't always sit back and watch somebody do it for us. I ain't get, maybe y'all don't get excited about it like I do, but my favorite poet, Jane Brown, said, I don't, I don't want nobody to give me nothing. Just open up the door and I'll. I got some help over there. I'll get it myself. Yeah, and that's what we have to realize in this text is that this woman, uh, she uh, was asked, what do you have in your house? And I, and I know uh, somebody sitting in here today, uh, you need uh, some help. You need a financial blessing. You need uh, a physical blessing. And God is asking you, what do you have in your house? Uh, I know you don't have a whole lot, but whatever you have, you ought to bring what you have and put it in the Lord's hand. And that's what that little boy with the two fish and the five loaves did. He put it in the Lord's hand. And you know what I found out, Jerusalem, when you put it in God's hand, when he give it back to you, it's always more than when it was when you gave it to him. I wish I had a witness over on this side. You put a little in God's hand, but he gave you back a whole lot more. It was good measure and pressed down and shaking together. God gave it back to you. Yes, yes. And then here's what she said. She said, thy servant, thy handmaid have not anything in the house save a pot of oil. So uh, Elisha said, well, okay, all right, here's what I want you to do. I want you to, there it is in verse 3, go borrow the vessels abroad of all of thy neighbors, even empty vessels, borrow not a few. Now, y'all got to understand something here because I look at this text and, and I read between the lines. Because, see, I know this girl had some family members. Uh-huh. And she was already in debt. Help me, somebody. And, and now the preacher going to tell her to go borrow some more. Hey, oh, y'all ain't going to help me this morning. And, and, and I don't know about y'all relatives. But, but somebody relative would have been saying, now, you already got a bill that you can't pay. And they told me that the debt collector was outside the house going to pick the boys up and take them off. Now, I don't know that for myself, but that's what they told me. 
Oh, y'all can look at me like that like you ain't never heard nobody talk like that. But you know that folk will get in your business and they'll get in your Kool-Aid and don't even know the flavor. But, 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 but look at this, look at this. Uh, I don't know if it bothered nobody else, but it bothered me because he tells, tells her to go borrow vessel. And then he said, don't borrow a few. In other words, make sure that you get as much as you can find. But I, 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 I kept on reading because if you keep on reading, you'll see what's going on here. And, and in verse 4 it says, and when thou art come in, thou shalt shut the door. And when I read that, my heart leaped for joy. Because I know something about the shut the door principle. Because see, uh, when you got working on your miracle, you can't let everybody be involved. Hey, hey man, you got you to gotta be like Jesus sometime. When the Jairus' daughter was sick, the Bible said that they were in there crying, saying she was dead. And the Bible said Jesus went in there and he put them all out. And sometimes, I don't mean no harm, but you're going to have to put some folk out of your life if you're going to get your miracle. Uh, baby, everybody can't go with you that came with you. And some folk, you just going to have to shut the door on them. Obviously, uh, they shut the door so that they could maintain some privacy. Amen. Because my parents taught me what go on at our, come on y'all, what go on at our house stays at our house. Uh, and and sometimes, uh, children, you can't tell what's going on at your house. Why? Because God is working different at your house than he is at the house down the street. Oh, glory to his name. And, and so he tells them to shut the door. But I remember Jesus talked about shutting that door too. Because Jesus said in Matthew chapter 6, uh, uh, when you go into your prayer closet, here what I want you to do. When you go in there, I want you to shut the door behind you uh, so that you can talk to your heavenly father in secret. And when you talk to him in secret, God is going to reward you openly. And, and I just want to shout this morning all by myself because I know that whatever I tell God in secret, he's going to reward me openly. Won't he uh, prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies? Won't the folk that been hating on you have to sit there and watch God bless you uh, and it ain't nothing they can do about it? I'm glad today. That I can shut the door. But then, as I rush on here, look at there at uh, verse 5. Uh, she shut the door, verse 4, and on thee and upon her sons, and, and thou shalt pour out into uh, those vessels, and thou shalt set aside that which is full. And that's verse, verse 5 says, so she went from him and shut the door upon her sons, who brought the vessels in to her, and she poured out. And what I like there was I see in that text, I also see love. Uh-huh, because her neighbors were willing to give the vessels to her. And, and I, I remember that poet said, if I can help somebody as I travel along, if I can cheer somebody with a word or a song, if I can show somebody who's traveling long, wrong, then my living will not be in vain. And we ought to be about helping somebody. You ought to try to make your business to help somebody every day of your life. Because let me tell you something, if you help somebody uh, uh, along the way, God is going to help you. And, and, and not only will God help you, he'll help your children too. Help me somebody. He'll help your grandchildren. Help me somebody. He'll help your family members. Uh, won't he keep your mama and your father strong if you help somebody? Won't he make your body strong? Folks say, I didn't believe you with that age. That's because the Lord has uh, helped me. I, I didn't know you had it like that. That's because the Lord is helping me. He's helping me to keep myself up and because he wants me to continue to do his will. Well, I got one more thing here I want to tell you, and then I'm going to my seat. Uh, there it is in verse 6. Uh, and it came to pass when the vessels were full that she said unto her son, 
bring me yet a vessel. And he said unto her, there's not a vessel more. And the Bible said that the oil stayed. And then she came and told the man of God what had gone on in her life. That girl gave her testimony. And she told him, she said uh, uh, that uh, I, I did exactly what you said do. And now the oil has stopped flowing. And the prophet told her, he said, go and sell the oil. And pay your debt. And once you get through paying your debt, I want you and your children to live off the rest. And I, and I want to encourage somebody uh, today, I know you got some bills that you can't pay. But I want you to know we serve a God who will give you enough to pay those bills. And, and you'll have enough left over to live off the rest. I, I, but how you know that preacher? Because see, what God will do is he'll keep on stretching the rest. Uh-huh. See, you might not think it's a whole lot until God gets it and he stretches it. Now God can stretch a little and make it into a whole lot. I wonder if I had anybody in here say, yeah, preacher, I know exactly what you're talking about because God stretched some things in my life. He stretched my mind so I could get an education. He stretched my heart so I could love my enemy. Do I have anybody who know that he'll stretch you? Yes, he will. Yes, he will. And I'm glad. Mm-hmm. And that uh, Jeremiah 29 and 11 tells me uh, that I know the plans that I have for you. And that's what uh, uh, Elijah gave this girl. He gave her a plan. Uh huh. And with her humility that she showed from the beginning to go and ask somebody for some help. Are y'all going to pray with me this morning? Mm -hmm. And uh, with the empathy uh, that the prophet showed uh, when he told her, I'm going to help you out. Mm -hmm. And uh, with the love uh, that her neighbor showed her uh, when they let her borrow the vessel. Well, and uh, with the plan uh, uh, that uh, the Lord brought through uh, in her life. Mm -hmm. uh, I want you to know uh, uh, that uh, H-E-L-P uh, spells help. Mm -hmm. uh, so when you need some help uh, in your life, uh, I want you to know you can help yourself. All you got to do is have a little humility uh -huh, because that's what Jesus did uh, when he, uh, he died on the cross. Uh, uh, he said, nobody take my life, uh, but I got the humility to lay it down. Uh-huh. And uh, he used empathy uh, uh, when he went to the cross uh, because he said, Lord, forgive them, uh, for they know not what they are doing. Uh, he used love uh, out there on that cross. Uh, uh, they hung him high uh, and they stretched him wide. Uh, but uh, before he died, uh, he said, Father, into thy hands uh, I command my spirit. Uh, and that was the plan uh, because God had a plan uh, over 2,000 years ago uh, because you couldn't pay your debt. Uh, but God said, I'm going to send my son down to 42 generations to pay your debt. I'm going to send him down and he's going to walk the dusty streets of Jerusalem to pay your debt. 33 long years he struggled down here to pay your debt. And one Friday they put a cross on his shoulders and he marched down through the streets of Jerusalem. Needed some help uh, along the way, uh, cause the cross got heavy, 
And somebody said uh, uh, that black Simon uh, uh, reached up uh, and he helped Jesus uh, bear his cross. Uh, and I'm going to Jerusalem. Uh, may the Lord bless you real good. Uh, uh, but I want to ask you one question. Uh, must Jesus bear the cross alone and all the world go free? No, there's a cross. There's a cross for me. You can help yourself. Humility, empathy, love, and God's plan. God bless you. God keep you.